Next chapter, commercial arithmetic. We start with currency. Currency is the money system used as a medium of exchange. Every country has its own local currency. For example, in Kenya, we have the Kenyan shilling. In Uganda, we have the Ugandan shilling and the Tanzanian shilling in Tanzania. Other internationally common currencies include the US dollar, the South African rand, the sterling pound, euro, the Japanese yens, and so on and so on. All these currencies have different values. Whenever one travels to a different country, they change their money into the local currencies for convenience. However, with increased globalization, highly valued currencies like the dollars can trade almost anywhere in the world. And so, when you walk into any bank, you would perhaps see a screen indicating the exchange rates between the local currency and other international currencies. These exchange rates vary all the time. When you look at that table, you will notice that each has a column for buying and another column for selling. This is how to interpret the table. If you have Kenya shillings and you want to change into dollars, then you will buy the dollars. That means the bank will sell you the dollars, so you use the selling figure. If on the other hand you have dollars and you want to change them into Kenya shillings, then you will sell the dollars to the bank. That means the bank will buy the dollars, so you go to the buying column. You will notice that the buying and the selling prices are different. And that's because the buying and selling of currencies is a business and the dealer has to make profit. Let's take an example. An American tourist arrives in Kenya from South Africa with 10,000 South African rands. He converts all the money into Kenya shillings at the airport. While in Kenya, he spends 45,000. On his way back, he converts all the remaining cash into U.S. dollars. How many dollars did he receive, assuming the rates were the same on both occasions? So, he arrives in Kenya with South African rands and wants to get Kenya shillings. So, he will sell the rands, and that means the bank will buy his rands. The bank is buying the South African rands at 11.98 shillings per rand. And so, one rand is equal to 11.98 shillings. How much will be 10,000 rands? So, we have 10,000 rands over one rand times 11.98 shillings. And we have 119,800 shillings. While in Kenya, he spends 45,000. So, he remains with 119,800 minus 45,000. And that gives us 74,800 shillings. This is the amount he will convert to dollars. So he wants to buy the dollars, which means the bank will sell him the dollars. The bank sells the dollars at 108.32 shillings per dollar. And so one dollar is equal to 108.32. So 74,800 is equivalent to how many dollars? So we have one dollar times 74,800 over 108.32, and we remain with 690.55 dollars. And so it is very important to understand which column to use, the buying or the selling. But just remember, if you are selling, it means the bank is buying. If you are buying, the bank is selling to you. Let me show you how the bank will make money out of these two situations. Assuming someone from the United States exchanged $1,000 on arrival in Kenya, and then immediately another person bought the $1,000. Let's see how much profit the dealer will make. On arrival, the person will sell the dollars to the dealer. So the dealer will buy the $1,000. How much money will he pay for the $1,000? Buying price is 108.25. And so $1 is equal to 
1.25 shillings. What about $1,000? So we have $1,000 over $1 times 108.25 shillings. The dollars cancel out and we remain with 108,250. This is the amount the dealer will pay the visitor from the United States. Now, immediately, another client walks in. He wants $1,000, the same amount the dealer has just bought. So the dealer will sell him the $1,000 now. The selling price is 108.32 shillings per dollar. So how much will the dealer receive? So $1 is equal to 108.32 shillings. How about $1,000? So we have $1,000 over $1 times 108.32 shillings. The dollars cancel out and we remain with 108,320 shillings. So he pays the dealer this amount of money. And so you see the dealer will make a profit out of the same $1,000 that has been transacted. He will make 108,320 the money he has received minus 108,250 and that gives us 70 shillings. That will be his profit. Next, we look at profit and loss. Now, the price of a commodity is called its cost or buying price. The terms profit and loss are used in instances where an individual buys or produces items for sale. Ordinarily, the resale price must be higher than the buying price so as to make business sense. The difference is called profit, and so profit is equal to the selling price minus the buying price. In unfortunate instances, the selling price may be lower than the buying price. In such cases, the difference is called a loss. And so loss is equal to buying price minus selling price. Often, profit and loss are expressed in terms of percentage. Usually, the buying price is equal to 100%. For example, by selling a shirt for 2,200 shillings, a seller makes a profit of 30%. What was the buying price? And so the buying price is equal to 100%. The selling price is 30% over the percentage of the buying price. And that is equal to 130%. And so 130% is equivalent to 2,200. So how about 100%? So we have 100% over 130% times 2,200. That gives us 1,692.30. Another example. Alan bought a car for 1.2 million and sold it later for 1 million. Calculate the percentage loss. So the buying price is equal to 1.2 million, and this is equivalent to 100%. The selling price is 1 million. The loss is 1.2 million minus 1 million, which is 0 0.2 million. So 1.2 million is equivalent to 100%. How about 0 0.2 million? So we have 0 0.2 million over 1.2 million times 100% and we remain with 16.67%. Next, discount. Now, when you walk into a shop, all the items have their prices, either marked or as may be told to you by the attendant. Prices may be fixed or negotiable. In negotiable cases, the buyer and the seller engages in a back and forth conversation in which the buyer requests the seller to reduce the price. That reduction is called a discount. And so discount is equal to marked price minus the buying price. If a dress is marked 1,500 and the seller agrees that you pay 1,300, then they give you a discount of 200 shillings. 
we can express this discount as a percentage. As always, the marked price is equal to 100%. And so 1500 is equal to 100%. How about 200? That is 200 over 1500 times 100%. That gives us 13.33%. Another example, the marked price of a refrigerator is 48,000. If a discount of 5% is allowed, how much will a customer pay for the item? And so 48,000 is equal to 100%. How about 5%? How much is equivalent to that? So we have 48,000 times 5 over 100, and that gives us 2,400. And so the discount is 2,400 shillings. So the buying price will be 48,000 minus 2,400, giving us 45,600 shillings. Now we move to commission. A person appointed by a company to sell their products is called a salesperson. A salesperson is often given a weekly or monthly target for the amount of items that he must sell. This is to ensure efficiency. To motivate the salesperson, the company often promises to pay the person a small percentage of the amount the salesperson makes. So the bigger the sale, the higher the amount. This amount is called commission. A salesperson may be paid either purely on commission where their salary is purely a percentage of the amount of sales they make. Or they may have a basic salary. In that case, there will be a target set for that person, and a commission is calculated from the amount sold over and above the target. For example, a salesperson has a basic salary of 17,000 per... For example, a salesperson has a basic salary of 17,000 per month. A commission of 7.5% is paid for all sales above 250,000. In a certain month, she made sales worth 380,000. Calculate her total pay for that month. So the total salary is equal to the basic salary plus commission. Commission is paid for sales above 250,000. And so the extra amount is 380,000 minus 250,000, giving us 130,000. So the commission will be calculated on this figure. So we have 7.5 over 100 times 130,000. That will give us 9,750. And so the total pay will be equal to 17,000, the basic salary, plus 9,750, the commission. That gives us 26,750. The way we teach it in university and in high school as well, in colleges, is if you fall behind, you're in desperate trouble that if you miss a class or miss an idea or don't do your homework, you go to the next class and the teacher assumes you know it, but it's like Greek to you. And so the biggest challenge is not falling behind and the strategy is do whatever needs to be done so you don't fall behind. Seek help wherever you can find it from students, from student help centers, from the teacher, from the teaching assistant, wherever you can get it. Because if you fall behind, it's like you're missing a floor in the building, you're missing a brick in the wall, and you just can't build the second floor without a good understanding of the first floor.